I've seen health workers stretch to the limits, from the streets to the Ebola wards, working valiantly to save lives and stop the spread of the disease. We've been here a week. It's time to go home. Now the airports are the new front line. You know, with so much Ebola here in Liberia, people want to know, can you really keep it from leaving? I want to see how they're trying. Driving in, guards first check my temperature. Fever is one of the first signs of Ebola. Then, a detailed questionnaire. Fever, no. Headache, no. Vomiting, no. Since I was fully covered in the Ebola wards, nothing that we did as journalists here put us in the high-risk category. But no one can be completely safe. American freelance cameraman Ashoka Mukpo contracted Ebola, now being flown to a hospital isolation unit in Nebraska for treatment. Back to that questionnaire, where the information is key. This is a really good screening questionnaire, but it's only going to work if people read it carefully and tell the truth. Eric Duncan, the librarian now in critical condition in a Dallas hospital, did not. He had been in close contact with an Ebola victim days before boarding a plane from this airport. And he didn't tell authorities. Before our departure, another checkpoint. A visual inspection to see if I look sick. My temperature taken a second time. Lots of checkpoints to make sure that people who are sick are not leaving the country. If you look sick, you have a fever, or you check yes on the questionnaire, you're not getting out. We're given the all clear. On our first flight out of Liberia to Europe, some flight attendants wear masks and gloves. And there's no signs here with information saying anything about Ebola. But in many airports, like at our layover in Brussels, surprisingly, it seems to be business as usual. And Dr. Besser joins us now. Welcome back, Rick. Thank you. First thing people want to know, is it safe for you to be here? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an important question. It, it really is. The, the thing about Ebola is you cannot transmit the disease until you have symptoms. So you know, ABC News talked with CDC, went through the recommendations. I'm monitoring my temperature. I took it this morning. If I develop a fever, then I would get, get care. But even with early fever, I wouldn't be able to spread the disease. And talk about the kind of precautions you took in Africa and on your way back. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the pieces people saw on TV didn't show those precautions. They saw me suited up when I was in the ward. And, and there, there were people actually watching all my interactions to make sure I didn't do anything that put me at risk. But every part of my body was covered. But the scenes on the street, after the camera went off, spraying down with bleach, spraying my feet down with bleach. The first time I shook anyone's hand was when I arrived in Newark Airport. And it, it felt odd because you don't touch anyone. In library, no touching at all. Not at all. And, and the scenes you brought back, so devastating uh, right now. Are they making any progress in Liberia, in Sierra Leone? It, it's slowing down this spread. You know, it, it was different. It felt different when I was there in August to how it felt this week. There's more international aid ramping up. They have a strategy. They're organizing these things. I interviewed the president, and she seemed to be in, in charge and in control and has the way. But it's a long way from strategy to getting this totally done. There's a lot more work that has to happen. And, and your single biggest concern right now has to be this rate of spread. Each infected person still having contact with two, maybe three more? Yeah, that's the problem. Until they get enough treatment units up and people want to get in there and they're, and they're being taken care of, they stay in the community and they're spreading disease. And the, the 17 treatment units the U.S. Has, has promised, none of them have even arrived or started to be built yet. And time matters. I'm concerned things are not moving fast enough. You sounded the alarm early on the need for a military effort, and President Obama announced it afterwards. What's the most important thing that needs to be done right now? Well, right now you have the advance team from the military there scoping out the mission. But I don't get the sense of, of urgency in how fast this has to happen. Every week that this goes on, you're having an exponential growth of this epidemic. We have to move faster and do more. We have to get medical providers there who are going to care for these patients.